The Chunin Exams is an iconic arc in the Naruto series, and many people's favorite arc. It's become a tradition that the Chunin Exams will never be concluded. It will always be interrupted. This was true in part one when Orochimaru interrupted it, and it was also true in the filler Chunin Exams we saw, and then in Boruto's Chunin Exams. And I think it's great. Orochimaru's invasion of the Leaf Village breaks the entire arc in a good way. It makes things tenser, it makes the stakes higher, and I wouldn't change that at all. But it's interesting to wonder what would have happened if the Chunin exams weren't interrupted by Orochimaru and the fights actually went along and we had a final for the tournament. Would have won? Well, let's find out in this video. In order for us to come up with a scenario where the attack doesn't happen, let's assume that Orochimaru's body that he was currently using during the Chunin exams arc expires a little bit quicker than he expected. Expected. We see that the body begins to expire around the Sasuke retrieval arc and that's when he begins to get really sick, prompting him to get a new body from one of his prisoners. So let's assume this happens earlier than Orochimaru expected, either because he had the body for longer or simply because Orochimaru's body wasn't as powerful and durable as he expected. Which means Orochimaru wouldn't be at his peak condition to face Hiruzen and he would not want to face his former teacher in in a less than optimal condition. It was a very difficult fight as it is, with Orochimaru in a good condition and with his Edo Tensei, so if Orochimaru wasn't feeling okay, there's a high chance Hiruzen just kills him, so he wouldn't take that risk. Also, you may say he would just get a new body from one of his prisoners, just like he did in the Sasuke retrieval arc, but no, it takes some time for Orochimaru to get used to the new body. So much so that after Orochimaru gets his body in the Sasuke retrieval arc, he has to stay in that chair full of bandages all around his body because he has to get used to it. It's not as simple as just switching. Also, Kimimaru would still be sick during this timeline, so he wouldn't be able to help either in the assassination of Hiruzen. So Orochimaru would just call off the invasion because if he cannot kill Hiruzen, then there's no point really. If Hiruzen was allowed to go and help the village during the invasion, they would have been stomped if Orochimaru wasn't there, even if Garo went ballistic with Chukaku. We see how Hiruzen was able to fend off the Nine Tails itself during the Nine Tails invasion so that one tail wouldn't be that big of a deal for the third Hokage. Now, with this scenario in mind, the first thing that changes about the Chunin exams is that Dosu would actually fight in the finals. He would know the plan was off and so Orochimaru wouldn't be there to watch him fight. He wanted to fight against Sasuke out of spite. We don't know exactly what Dosu wanted because he confronts Gara saying, I want to kill you first here because Sasuke is my main goal. But then again, before hand, Dosu had actually parted ways with Orochimaru per se. He said to himself, after beating Choji, I'm not gonna let you treat me as a guinea pig, Orochimaru. So my theory is that Dosu actually wanted to kill Sasuke in front of Orochimaru to say, hey, check me out. I'm actually powerful. You should care about me. Kind of petty, but it makes sense. So in this scenario, Dosu wouldn't feel the urge to go and kill Gara and then get promptly annihilated and he would actually fight in the arena. So the brackets would be just just like they were first shown after the preliminaries of the tuning exams ended. They essentially begin with the quarterfinals of the tournament, but there is one match beforehand, which is Dosu versus Shikamaru. That match decides the first opponent of Temari, but the bracket in general goes like this. Naruto versus Neji, then Sasuke versus Gara, Shino versus Konkuro, then Dosu versus Shikamaru, and then Temari fights whoever wins between Dosu and Shikamaru. So the tournament would begin by the fight that precedes the quarter finals, which is Shikamaru versus Dosu. A very interesting fight. Shikamaru, the most intelligent member of the Konoha 12 by a long shot, even though he doesn't have a lot of jutsus or chakra or stamina going for him, he has his intellect. Dosu, on the other hand, is definitely the strongest member of his own sound team, and he has some very interesting jutsus. Now, one thing we have to bear in mind is that both opponents know each other's jutsus. First, because they watched each other's matches during the preliminary and also because Shikamaru actually used the Shadow Possession Jutsu during their encounter in the Forest of Death. This would definitely favor Shikamaru much more than Dosu because of his analytical nature. Now, Dosu is not a slouch in terms of strategy. For example, when he's about to fight Choji, he sees that Choji is covering his ears as soon as he uses the Meatball Transformation, and so his sound wouldn't be able to affect him properly the way he was doing before. He comes up with a very
very interesting strategy to beat Choji. Choji rolls like a ball and tries to hit those who, those who dodges, of course. And because Choji was rolling so fast, those who wouldn't be able to touch Choji. It was a problem. So he waits for Choji to hit the wall of the arena in the preliminaries. And then when Choji is about to reverse and start to roll again, there is a moment where he's going to be completely still. And those uses that opportunity to hit Choji and then uses his sound jutsu to shake the water molecules inside of Choji's body, promptly defeating him. A very interesting, simple but effective strategy that those who came up with in about five seconds. And yes, those who had seen what Choji could do before in the Forest of Death as well, so he could already have a counter in his mind before the fight. But it shows that Dosu is not a slouch intellectually. And also, you know, he beats Choji so fast, it's kind of insane. However, we also have to count that Shikamaru would know Dosu's abilities. The thing is, of course, Shikamaru would have a counter for Dosu's sound, at least when it comes to the most basic jutsu where he attacks your ears with a sound. I have no doubt in my mind that Shikamaru brought something like cotton to put in his ears during the fight so he could block the sound waves. He's the very smart prep time guy and he had literally a month to prepare for his fight against Dosu, which he thought he would be fighting first. He didn't think he was gonna fight Temari in the first round, so he had a month to prepare for the fight against Dosu. And yes, he's a lazy guy, but he also doesn't really want to lose and get stomped, so if he can do the bare minimum preparation, which is not much preparation at all, and bring some earplugs to the fight, he would have definitely done so. There is also a mismatch in how these two characters fight. Shikamaru is primarily a medium to long ranged fighter, and Dosu is a close range fighter. You may say, well, but the sound can spread around and hit people from far away when Dosu uses his tricks. And first, he wouldn't be able to do that because Shikamaru's ears would be plugged, so he wouldn't be able to hit Shikamaru's ears, and therefore, he would have to touch Shikamaru anyway to shake his water molecules, just like he did to Choji. And second, even if somehow Shikamaru doesn't do his spread thing, Dosu still has to get close. He's a close range fighter, even when he's directing the sound towards the ear of the opponent, just like he does against Rock Lee, he has to get close. Otherwise, there would have been no reason for Dosu to engage anyone at all in melee ever. But every time he fights against someone, he has to close the range. He fought Rock Lee in melee. Why would you fight Rock Lee in melee if you had some ranged option? It's very stupid because Rock Lee is the Taijutsu guy. He fought Choji in melee range as well. He fought Kabuto when he attacks Kabuto. He has to dash towards him and breaks his glasses with the sound waves in the beginning of the exams. So he would have to get close to Shikamaru. And I rationalized that by saying the sound waves would disperse too much in the longer range. And that's why Dosu has to get closer because he can only control them so much. That's a pretty good thing for Shikamaru. He would just hang back and run away from Dosu doing those hit and run tactics. Even against Temari, Shikamaru was hitting and running from a long range fighter. So I can imagine how he would fight against Dosu that has to close the range. Dosu wouldn't really have that many options against Shikamaru. He would have to come in close. It would be difficult to hide from Shikamaru and catch him off guard because you're in the middle of an open field arena with the exception of a couple of trees. So Shikamaru would see where Dosu's coming from. Dosu is not terribly fast. When Rock Lee showed up to save Sakura from the sound team, he literally blitzes all three sound ninjas, including Dosu, in base with his weights on. And Dosu was absolutely destroyed by first gate Rock Lee with weights on. Lee would have killed Dosu if Zaku hadn't softened the ground. And Dosu manages to dodge Choji's attack, but I can see Shikamaru doing the same, especially because Shikamaru was effortlessly dodging Temari's attacks in the tuning exams. Temari, who was able to fend off a direct kick from Rock Lee very casually during the preliminaries, and the sound team was not. So I have no doubt in my mind that Shikamaru would be able to contend against Dosu in Taijutsu. The question is, Dosu would have to touch Shikamaru if we're giving the prep time for him, or at least get close to him. And before this happens, Shikamaru can use the Shadow Possession Jutsu to catch Dosu. Now, Dosu's not dumb, but he's also not a master strategist like Shikamaru is. And with a guy that has to approach Shikamaru, while well, Shikamaru can just run backwards and use his Shadow Possession to offend his opponent, Shikamaru can come up with a billion different strategies to counter Dosu's attacks and defeat him. Now, there's a chance he would just pull off what he did against Temari and give up, not caring about the fight at all. But he gave up against Temari because he was running out of 
chakra and of course he was lazy but his chakra had a lot to do with it against those who i see the fight being easier and so shikamaru wouldn't have to give up even when he catches tamari and he was about to you know defeat her he says yeah i had 200 different alternatives for how to deal with you yeah he had a plan to deal with tamari if that was the case and i can see him doing the exact same with dosu but as it would be easier to catch dosu with his shadow possession i mean shikamaru caught a group of eight chunins a couple of chapters later i see him catching dosu this dude the decks just stacked up against him in this particular situation there's also the fact that dosu got absolutely bodied by a semi-transformed gara and sasuke and naruto were able to contend against the gara fairly well tamari was also capable of fending off sasuke even though it's a filler scene where tamari fights sasuke but anyways she's able to be relative against him and sasuke was relative against gara so if dosu was stomped so hard by gara it means he would lose to the guy that fought against Imari and had a moral victory against her when you consider that dosu has so many disadvantages over shikamaru because of his range problem shikamaru wins this fight it wouldn't be easy i would say it would be mid difficulty but shikamaru would advance and then we have neji versus naruto this match we actually get to see to its conclusion it's not interrupted nothing weird happens about it naruto and neji are fighting without knowing that they're about to be invaded by the sand village so they're fighting with all they got in the original the same would apply here this scenario wouldn't really change and we clearly see that naruto won that match now some people argue that wasn't a good fight and then naruto winning by just punching neji once is bad i'm not a big fan of the neji versus naruto fight the themes in that fight were a bit mishandled nevertheless naruto wins there is no reason why this fight would ever change next we move on to the sasuke versus gara fight there's a problem here a bit of a problem in the original sasuke was late his training of the chidori took much longer than anticipated and he arrived actually after the time expired for his fight they had to delay sasuke versus gara and put shikamaru versus demari before them just because orochimaru really wanted to see sasuke fighting and also because gara's fight was the trigger for the assault to happen and because orochimaru wouldn't be here to do that and convince hiruza no no let's postpone the fight i want to see this fight things could get a little bad for sasuke and he could be defaulted but remember that in this scenario there is a fight before naruto versus neji which is shikamaru versus dosu exactly like timori versus shikamaru in the original there was another fight in between them so this would give sasuke and kakashi enough time to arrive maybe they arrive a little bit later but still sasuke would face gara now we saw how this fight happened sasuke was pretty much dominating gara he copied rock lee's movements and acquired a weightless lee speed which granted him the power to dodge gara's sand infiltrate his sand and just blitz gara punching and kicking him left and right with taijutsu and also breaking his sand armor a little bit gara felt so much pressure that he was forced to use that orb of sand around his body something he didn't even do against rock lee with a fifth gate and bear in mind when sasuke was assaulting gara with taijutsu and dodging his sand completely fine he wasn't using the sharingan and then of course sasuke hits gara with the chidori and for the first time gara bleeds he enters in a state of shock first because he's hurt for the first time and second because he's just going crazy thinking about his mom and sasuke beats gara in the arena of course later on in the forest when gara is actually transforming into shukaku sasuke loses but in the arena here even though gara transforms for a split second into that version 2 shukaku it doesn't really amount to much it's just a glimpse of that power but gara collapses he doesn't pass out because if he did the entire shukaku would come out but he's in no condition to fight so much so that when the assault happens in the original Timari and Kankuro had to actually drag him outside of the leaf village for him to recover from his wounds and this takes some time meaning that if the fight had continued normally Genma would have just stepped in and end the fight saying Gara had no condition to continue also we see that Gara's shield breaks after Sasuke hits him with a Chidori sure Sasuke is a little bit shook after seeing that glimpse of Shukaku and his arm hurts 
hurts a little bit because he was grabbed, but Sasuke is fine after that. He goes on and fights Gaara in the forest. Didn't seem to be an issue there. So Sasuke would have advanced into the semifinals, just like Naruto before him, which means he will be facing Naruto in the first semifinal of the Chunin exams. The important thing to note about this fight is that Sasuke spent one of his Chidori charges and he only has two under normal circumstances, aka if he doesn't use a curse mark. So this is important to keep in mind. But let's move on to the next fight, which would be Shino versus Kankuro. Kankuro defaults and doesn't fight against Shino in the arena because he says there's no point, I don't want them to see my jutsu because we're gonna fight in the invasion, so I'm just gonna quit here. In this situation, there's no invasion, there would be no reason for Kankuro not to fight against Shino there. We saw Shino versus Kankuro in the original as well. They fought under very different circumstances. The stakes were much higher because it was a battle to the death, even though none of them died in the fight. It was a fight between two actual enemies in the battlefield with no proctor overseeing the fight. And it was also different because the environment was different from the arena. It was a dense forest, which is in stark contrast to the very open field arena. But even still, we can use that fight to base our decision here. That fight was the definition of a very high difficulty fight. Both fighters collapsed by the end of it. Shino wins the fight because he prevents Konkuro from returning to Gara immediately and fighting against Sasuke, but he gets poisoned pretty bad and if his father hadn't arrived, Shino would have died and Konkuro would have survived, even though Shino quote-unquote won the fight because his bugs ate Konkuro's chakra, but they didn't kill him. Shino doesn't really kill people, he's a nice guy deep down. So this fight would still be difficult no matter what. Would it end like that, like almost a double KO in the arena? Well, let's analyze first the terrain. There are advantages and disadvantages for both fighters in both terrains. First, Kankuro was able to use the trees to hide himself and use his puppets to attack Shino from far away in the forest, something he wouldn't be able to do in the arena, meaning that he would be much more exposed to Shino's insects. Kankuro was able to keep out of sight from Shino and attack him from far away, even though Shino's also a ranged fighter, he fares much better up close than Kankuro does, and I would argue the trees gave Kankuro more of an advantage when it comes to their direct confrontation. However, the trees also gave Shino the possibility to hide his final attack. Shino wins the fight by implanting a female bug on Kankuro, and this bug attracted the attention of other male bugs that were circumventing the fight itself and attacking Kankuro from behind without Kankuro noticing there was a swarm of insects coming towards him. And this was able to happen because there was an entire forest covering the arrival of the insect, something that wouldn't really happen in the middle of the open arena. So in the actual Chunin exams, this would have been a much more frank battle between the two. They wouldn't be able to use that much subterfuge, even though Shino and Kankuro would still strategize. For one, Shino has some very good counters for the puppets. He can use his insects to eat Kankuro's chakra threads, which is very important. It's something he does in the forest, and I don't see why he wouldn't do it in the arena. He can also use his bugs to clog the articulations of the puppets and essentially paralyze them. Kankuro would have his poison going for him, which was what actually dealt Shino some damage in the fight. Shino breathed in some of the poison in the middle of a poison cloud, which was why he was in such a bad condition after the fight ended. But because Kankuro would be in such an open field, he wouldn't have the opportunity to come around Shino using the trees as a cover, launching poison and attacking with his puppets from far away, and he would also be much more exposed. Now the thing about Shino's insects is that if you are swarmed by them, you're done. There's nothing you can do about it because they eat your chakra in an alarming rate. So Shino's wind condition here is pretty straightforward. And Kankuro's, well, he can stab Shino with his puppets using their weapons, but the poison takes some time to actually deal some damage and affect your body. And in a more open field, Shino would stay much safer from the poison clouds and the poison attacks than he was in the forest. It wouldn't be easy, it would be a mid to mid-high difficulty fight, but I can see Shino coming out on top and unscathed. If he gets hit by anything, he gets poisoned, and then, well, he's not really advancing to the next round. It's gonna be a Pyrrhic victory. But in this scenario, we are assuming he managed to beat Conqueror without getting hit, and so he advances to the second semi-final. The last quarter-final will be the exact same as it was in the original, Shikamaru versus Temari, but 
there's a catch. Shikamaru would be much more tired and he would have way less chakra to fight Timari. He fought Timari rested in the original and here he fought against Dosu beforehand. There's even a possibility Shikamaru gives up before the fight starts. But if that happens, I see Naruto just pushing him just like he did in the original and then he falls into the arena and then he has to fight anyway. So the question would be how would he fare against Timari in this situation? Well, probably wouldn't have as many shadow possessions as he had in the fight against Timari. But even still, he said he was out of chakra, but he went to use the shadow possession against the Chunins from the Sound Village when they were pursuing Sasuke, delaying them until Asuma arrived to kill them all. So he still had some chakra left in him, and as the Dosu fight was easier than Timari's fight in the original in this scenario, Shikamaru would still have some gas in the tank. Not as much as he had in the original, of course. He would have an advantage, though, because this fight would be later in the day, because there was another fight before it, the shadows cast by the walls of the arena would be bigger, meaning that the range of his shadow possession would be longer. Naruto also did the same trick with Neji, digging that hole in the ground, so Shikamaru could in theory pull off the same strategy. Would he be able to with not as much chakra? I still think so, but in the brink of running completely out of chakra by the end of it, the outcome would be the exact same. Shikamaru would give up, even if he caught Temari, and if not, Temari would beat him as he runs out of chakra, but as soon as Shikamaru realizes he doesn't have chakra left, he's just gonna say, yeah, I quit, I give up, and Genma would interrupt the fight, Shikamaru would lose, Temari would advance to the semi-final against Shino. So now we have Naruto versus Sasuke and Shino versus Temari. Let's do Temari versus Shino first, shall we? These two fighters are long-ranged fighters, but they can both deal with short-range techniques, though there would be no reason for them to do that in this particular fight. At least in the beginning, they would start by attacking each other from a range. At this point, both fighters know what each other are capable of. Temori and Shino are both strategists. Temori is definitely the smartest member in the Sand team, and Shino is the second smartest member in the Konoha 12. Shino doesn't really have a hard counter for Temori's win, just like he had for Konkuro's puppets. It will be a much more straightforward battle. Now, Temori, her attacks in this stage of the tuning exams are not exactly devastating. She gets much more powerful later on, but we can see in the fight against Shikamaru that she is blowing wind non-stop towards him. She is hitting the trees where Shikamaru is standing behind in the corner of the arena, and sure, she's cutting the trees a little bit with the wind, but it's not really doing that much damage. We see later in the fight against Tayuya that she is literally chopping off hundreds of massive trees in that forest with her new wind-style attack, but of course there was a summoning attack, it was different, it was more powerful, we have to assume Tamari is at the level she was in the tuning exams, meaning that Shino could take cover in the trees if he needed to. It's probably safe to assume that a powerful gust of wind from Tamari would blow the insects away, though I don't think it would outright destroy a cloud of insects. They're more durable than people give them credit for. The best durability feat for Shino's insects was when he used them to clog Zaku's armholes, and when Zaku used his sound blast, the arm blew themselves apart. You may not know this, but in the manga, the scene is much more gruesome. You can actually see him losing his arms, and then, of course, he loses the fight. We see that in the Forest of Death, when Zaku goes all out with that jutsu, he carves out a section of the ground of the forest, blowing things away. It's an extremely potent attack, much more potent than Temari's win style in the Chuni exams. The insects tank that just fine. They didn't even buckle. We don't see a single insect dead after the Zaku fight, meaning that Timari's attacks wouldn't be very effective against them. But still, it would be tough for them to approach her, so Shino would have to look at the situation much more carefully. Now, he could use the hole in the ground that Naruto used to punch Neji just like Shikamaru did, but if Shikamaru used the hole in his fight against Timari beforehand, she would be much more aware of that problem and just be on the lookout. Let me not stay close to this thing because he can probably hide inside in it and attack me from behind or something. This fight would most likely divulge into a battle of attrition. Shino trying to strike at Temari from all sides with his bugs, while Temari fends them off with her wind while trying to strike Shino back. Now the good thing going for Shino here is that the 
insects can come from every single direction, meaning that they could keep Temari occupied. And also, Shino has the power to use insect clones to fool Temari and come up with interesting strategies to eventually catch her off guard. And as Temari is such a one-trick pony, at least in this point in the story where she can just boom boom blowing wind, this fight would eventually turn into a battle of attrition. Shino would send his insects and Temari would try to blast them away. Who would have more chakra to keep this going? Because as we've said, Temari wouldn't be able to destroy the insects. She would have to try and find an opening to hit Shino, but he could take over behind the trees. If not, he could even use his insects as a barrier. Temari wouldn't be able to destroy his entire army of insects. Sure, she may kill a decent chunk, but Shino doesn't have to spend his own chakra when attacking Temari. It's the insects that are going, but Temari has to spend chakra to blast her wind style attacks. Temori had a battle before this one, which she had to use wind style, so she spent some chakra. Shino definitely has the edge in this battle of attrition here. It would be very difficult for Shino, don't get me wrong, but he would come up with a strategy, he would swarm her with insects, and eventually they would take her down. Also, if Shikamaru got tired before he could execute his complete strategy using Naruto's hole in the ground, Shino could catch Temori with that same strategy, but instead of using a shadow through the hole, he could use his insects. So I will give this fight to Shino High Diff, he advances into the final. And now let's move on to Naruto versus Sasuke. This would definitely begin as a taijutsu fight, where Naruto would open with his shadow clone jutsu, assaulting Sasuke from all sides. It's very clear this would be how the fight begins. Naruto wouldn't really try to engage Sasuke without his clone as a backup, but he wouldn't really find much success. Sasuke had achieved weightless Lee's speed here. He was able to casually dodge Gara Sand, as I mentioned before, without his Sharingan. Weightless Lee, who is faster than Neji. Now, sure, Neji may be faster with his hands and have a faster notion for attacks during the fight than Lee does. Neji was casually disposing of Naruto's shadow clones during the Chunin exams. Sasuke would be able to do the exact same thing. We even see Sasuke in the hospital fight doing that. He disposes of an immense army of Naruto's shadow clones, much bigger than the army who fought Neji in the Chunin exams. And bear in mind that Sasuke was the exact same Sasuke that was in the Chunin exams, if not weaker because he was over a month in the hospital because of Itachi's Tsukiyomi, while Naruto had that entire time to train under Jiraiya, learn the Rasengan, and also it's very much implied he got stronger in every single way during that time in the search for Tsunade arc. So, a nerfed Sasuke fresh out of hospital was able to contend against an army of shadow clones from a much more powerful Naruto than the one in the Chunin exams. Sure, he got hit a couple of times, but in the end of the day, he quickly shut down those clones using the fireball jutsu. Sasuke would be able to do the same thing here, disposing of the clones and ultimately finding where the real Naruto was, and then Sasuke would assault him in taijutsu, which Naruto would have no chance. Now, you could also argue that Naruto was capable of using 5,000 shadow clones against Gara in the forest, but that's what we call a mental amp. Naruto had to protect his friends and therefore he gained more chakra through the power of friendship. Naruto would be more psyched to fight Sasuke than he was to fight Neji, even though Neji had wronged him and Hinata and Naruto promised that he would defeat Neji, he probably would be more excited about fighting Sasuke in front of an entire crowd and having this chance to beat his rival, the guy he's always wanted to beat his entire life, but this wouldn't be the same quote-unquote mental amp that he got in the forest when Gara was about to kill Sakura. It's just completely different stakes. Now maybe he would be able to create more shadow clones than he created against Neji, but it doesn't really matter if he creates a hundred clones, Sasuke can deal with them. He's so much faster he could run circles around the clones. Even if he gets around that he can do the same thing he did in the hospital, jump up and toss a fireball destroying all of them. But Naruto still has options here. He's been training with Jiraiya for a month for a reason. Obviously, he would resort to the power of the Nine Tails, just like it did against Neji and against Gara in the Chunin exams as well. Nine Tails would definitely grant him the chakra. Now the question is, how much chakra would he be able to draw from the Nine Tails? It would probably be more chakra than he drew against Neji and less chakra than he drew against Gara, because everything depends on Naruto's emotions. Maybe Sasuke would provoke him during the fight and make him more psyched up, meaning he would get more chakra from the Nine Tails. This fight in the arena, sure, it's important 
important for Naruto as a person, but it's not a fight where lives are depending on it. We clearly see throughout the entire series that protecting your friends is what actually provides that extra power to you. Kakashi even says that during the war arc. At this point, Sasuke would activate his Sharingan because honestly, he wouldn't have needed his Sharingan to defeat the Naruto clones if he was able to dodge Gara sand without his Sharingan and punch Gara through the sand shield. He wouldn't need them to fight the Naruto army. Of course, with the Nine Tails' chakra leaking out and powering up Naruto, he would need the Sharingan to keep up with that. When he fought against Neji with the Amp, he was pretty much exactly relative to Neji. They clashed Taijutsu attacks back and forth in the arena, and in the end of the day, their final clash was a stalemate. Neji began his rotation while Naruto hit him with his kunai, and they had that small explosion, which didn't end the fight. Neji thought he had beaten Naruto, but then he comes from the ground and punches him on the chin. Now, Sasuke with a Sharingan, which can read the opponent's movements, unlike the Byakugan, which only allows you to see very well the chakra network and see you through things and provides you with a 360 degree vision, it doesn't give you that precog that the Sharingan gives, meaning that Sasuke would be faring better against this Naruto, especially because Sasuke is faster than Neji was. Everybody in the crowd states that Sasuke is around the Weightless Lee level, and we just see through sheer feats that Weightless Lee is far faster than Neji is. When he fights against Garo only by removing his weights, not even activating the gates, he is vanishing from sight and appearing behind Gara, punching him. It's insane. Neji never ever does that. Now, of course, his hands move quickly because he strikes the opponent several times, but Sasuke would be faster, especially with a Sharingan. And if Sasuke was getting overwhelmed, he would use the second charge of his Chidori. He wouldn't really want to use that out of the gate. It wouldn't be very smart for Sasuke, especially because he knew that if he hit a Shadow Clone with his Chidori instead of the original Naruto, the fight would be very much jeopardized. So he would save the Chidori for if he needed. And if Naruto enhanced by the Nine Tails pressed Sasuke enough, he would use the Chidori to end the fight. And Naruto wouldn't really be able to do anything about it. The Chidori attacking speed is insane. It's literally how the Chidori is formed through the sheer speed of your movements. You can coalesce the chakra into this lightning blade in your hand. Naruto wouldn't be able to dodge that. Sasuke has the Sharingan to make sure he hits the attack and doesn't get a counter attack. And that's the exact reason why Kakashi teaches him the Chidori. So there wouldn't be much of a way for Naruto to block that. And I don't see him dodging it either. Naruto doesn't have a barrier jutsu. Maybe he could use shadow clones to get in front of him, but Sasuke would just rip through them and strike at the real Naruto. We see him doing something very similar to that when he strikes Gara with a Chidori in the arena. The sand orb surrounding Gara shoots some spikes at Sasuke, but he dodges the spikes and actually pierces the barrier, hitting Gara that was behind it. Now, one of the reasons why Sasuke wouldn't want to use the Chidori out of the gate was also because he wouldn't want to kill Naruto, but in this situation, he would obviously hit Naruto in a non-lethal spot so that he doesn't kill his best friend. And you could argue that in the Valley of the End, Naruto was able to completely regenerate from a Chidori strike because of the Nine Tails' chakra, but the Amp would not be nearly as high here. He received way more chakra in the Valley of the End, even before the first tail appeared than he would have received in the Chunin exam, so he wouldn't heal completely out of the Chidori. It would at least give Sasuke enough time to bring Naruto into submission and win the fight for sure. Now there is one more thing Naruto could do in the arena to fight against Sasuke, and that would be to summon Gamabunta. Sure, if Naruto summons Gamabunta, it's over and it's a legal move because you can fight with companions in the Chunin exams. Kiba fought with Akamaru, for example, so he would be able to summon Gamabunta, even though Gamabunta is almost at a tail beast level. He's a completely different thing from Akamaru. It would technically still be legal because they don't really impose any rules or limitations for the fights in the Chunin exams exams. They say, do the best to defeat the other guy, whatever happens, happens, you know? I'll stop the fight whenever I feel like the opponent has lost so that you don't kill him. But other than that, go nuts. Summoning Gamabunta would definitely be going nuts in this situation. But Naruto wouldn't summon Gamabunta for several different reasons. First, because there's a big possibility Sasuke just defeats him before he's even able to draw from the Nine Tails' chakra. If he pinpoints the real Naruto among the Shadow Clones and just unleashes
reaches a Taijutsu Barrage before Naruto can tap into the Nine Tails, then he wins and Naruto just cannot summon Gamabunta at all because he needs the Nine Tails' chakra to do so. Even if you assume he gets the Nine Tails amp, he wouldn't summon Gamabunta into the fight. Gamabunta said that he would only help Naruto if Naruto were to obey him and do everything he said. Naruto summoning Gamabunta in the middle of an arena to fight against a 12 year old kid would be very disrespectful for Gamabunta himself. He'd be like, you summoned me here to fight this boy in front of this crowd? You're using me just to win this fight? He would be pissed. It would be outrageous for him to fight against such an unworthy opponent like a 12 year old and Gamabunta would just refuse to help Naruto in that situation. Gamabunta has an ego, you know? Naruto wouldn't want to summon Gamabunta because he would want to beat Sasuke with his own power. Granted, the Nine Tails is not technically his own power, but you get what I mean. He would not want a second fighter to steal the spotlight against Sasuke. He would want to do it himself because Naruto wanted to prove to himself that he was capable of defeating Sasuke. After all, this was one of his main goals during the entire story. Ever since he was a small child, he had that rivalry with Sasuke and using somebody else to do so would be a little cheap in his eyes. Of course, there is the argument that says Naruto was training to learn the summoning jutsu so he would have used in the tuning exams arc. I counter this argument by saying the following. If Naruto chose not to summon Gamabunta in the valley of the end fight against Sasuke, in a fight where the stakes are a billion times higher, if Naruto loses, Sasuke is gonna go to Orochimaru, train under Orochimaru, Orochimaru is gonna use his body and kill Sasuke in the process, so Naruto had to bring Sasuke back no matter what. And in that fight, Naruto doesn't summon Gamabunta, even though he could have because he quite literally draws the most Nine Tails' chakra in his entire life up until that point in the fight. So he had enough chakra and chances to summon the big toad, and he chose not to. Why would he do that in the Chuni exams arena where the stakes are much lower and Gamabunta would be unwilling to help Naruto in that situation? So no, Naruto wouldn't have summoned a toad to the fight. Also, there's the curse mark that Sasuke has access to, but Sasuke is trying to avoid using it in this point of the story. First because Kakashi sealed it so it's more difficult, but also Kakashi would just stop the fight if Sasuke tapped into the curse mark. It was even a condition in the first fight against Yoro in the preliminaries. If you use your chakra, I'm gonna have to take you out of the fight here because you're just gonna die. The curse mark's gonna take over your body, you know? Of course in here he wouldn't have the same chakra problem, he would be able to use his jutsus normally, but he cannot use more than two chidoris in a day because then he runs out of chakra and the curse mark takes over his body and he just gets paralyzed just like in the fight against Gara in the forest. So the curse mark's a non-factor here, but Sasuke wouldn't need it to beat that version of Naruto. Naruto himself even feels jealous about Sasuke having the Chidori in the Chuni exams. He says, Sasuke actually has something like that, it's amazing. Of course he's trying to hide that. Beforehand, when he is climbing up the stairs and Gara murders those two guys almost in front of him in Shikamaru, Naruto is terrified for Sasuke's life and then when he sees the Chidori, Naruto just like, no, I want to learn that too, what the hell? Meaning that Naruto thought himself weaker than Sasuke in that point of the story, and Naruto had access to the Nine Tails' chakra. He knew everything he could do against Neji, and he had just beaten Neji. And after seeing the Chidori for the first time, Naruto was like, yeah, this is not good for me. Ah, I want to learn something like that. Now, I'll grant Naruto the high difficulty here. Sasuke would have to use a Chidori landing in an unvital spot to win the fight, even though there is a possibility Sasuke Sasuke wins the fight before Naruto even uses the Nine Tails' chakra in the first place. Sasuke advances to the finals with two Chidori charges spent. The final round, Uchiha versus the Aburame clan. Sasuke will be Chidori-less in this fight. Shino will be tired but still with a decent amount of chakra. His insects would have been a little bit diminished by Tamari's attacks. He wouldn't have as many insects, some of them would have definitely died. He would still be able to fight against Sasuke as well. Now how this fight would play out. Both fighters would know what each other are capable of, so they would have the information, and Shino would try to come up with a strategy like he always does. Now, Sasuke is not dumb. He's not a strategist in part one. He becomes a strategist in Shippuden. You can see the fight against Deira and the fight against Itachi and the fight against Anzo. He doesn't really have that much to strategize
place around in part one. However, he is much faster than Shino's insects and than Shino himself. He completely eclipses him in Taijutsu without his showering gun even. And of course, Shino would know that and he would try to attack Sasuke from a long range. Sasuke has a very hard counter for Shino's insects. He has fire style and unlike wind style, they can cut through things and cutting through insects. It's not exactly the easiest thing in the world. Fire style is a different beast when it comes to that. Especially Sasuke who can breathe a massive fireball that can literally engulf almost every single insect Shino uses against him and burn them. We see that in the fight against Gara, even after Sasuke uses two charges of the Chidori, he is still able to keep his showering gun activated and use fire style attacks. He would be able to use his fire style to contend against Shino's insects and attack Shino from a distance as well with his ranged attacks or even close up on Shino and stomp him in Taijutsu. Now maybe there's a strategy for Shino to come up with here but I see Sasuke just dodging out of the way of the insects. He would see them coming. It wouldn't be like Tamari who isn't as fast and wouldn't be able to withstand this endless barrage of insects. This also has to do with the fact that Sasuke can burn them away with his fire style which is a hard counter for the Aburame clan. Sasuke can use Lee's speed to absolutely dominate Shino in a Taijutsu combat. And if Shino tries to use a bug barrier around him, Sasuke can use his fire style to completely burn them away. So Sasuke would take this fight mid-difficulty and win the Chunin Exams tournament. Like this video to help me out with the YouTube algorithm, it really helps. Also subscribe if you haven't done so already. This video is really long, so if you don't subscribe now, I don't know when you're gonna do it. And ring the notification bell, really helps me out too. Watch this other video right here for more entertaining Naruto content. And thank you so much for watching.